Yeah, uh, they've been grinding all year, and they're really close. Just two more wins. Okay. Players getting set up here. Do we know what decks they're on? Do we have the Yes, we do. The deck so uh, Zachary's actually on that dark box, like toolbox okay. deck. Uh, okay. We haven't really seen it much, and I'm actually excited because it features a lot of the new cards from Unified Minds. And Kenny's prizes are going to tell us <laughs> yeah. he's only on one deck. That is the Pikachu and Zekrom GX deck. That's uh, the most played, or second most played deck uh, in the building today. And there we are. Ooh, two Sneasels in the prizes for Zach here. So we have not seen the Dark Toolbox deck. It's been pretty popular going into World, and a lot of people have been talking about it. A lot of uh, content's been made about it, but we haven't actually seen it on camera today. I know there's a lot going on with it. Can you give us a quick overview of what uh, Zach's deck is trying to do? So it's very reminiscent of the Quagsire uh, Naganadol deck from previous tournaments. It's you set up uh, a critical mass of energy in play, and then you have different attackers for different matchups, and you just really switch between those. Uh, really utilizes the Weavile GX from Unified Minds, and uh, he just needs to get focused on getting his basics set up first, and then if he can do that, it's easy sailing from there. Yeah, that is easier said than done, I think, a lot of the times I've talked to a couple of players who think that the Dark Toolbox deck, as we call it, is kind of too inconsistent, too clunky, and that's why they've avoided it, but it looks like it's working out for Zachary here. Yeah, pretty well. Uh, four zero one start. Uh, has not taken a loss today, but that tie is a little detrimental for his plans for day two. Kenny's going to start things off just playing a Cynthia, resetting his hand. Yeah, it's not too bad. Uh, he is playing that Pikachu and Zekrom uh, deck. It utilizes all the best cards for this Lightning type. Den and AGX, you have Electromagnetic, Radar, Cherish Ball added to the deck. And then uh, one of the new tag teams for the deck is the Raichu Alolan Raichu GX. Uh, being able to tandem shock to bring an act like you bring an active tandem shock 160 paralyzed and then it also GX attack can just take knockouts on any other tag team GX with just an electro power. Yeah, I think one of the kind of prevailing thoughts going into this world championship, of course, was that post rotation the Pikachu and Zekrom GX deck just lost the least of any of the big decks. Yeah. And it also got the the Raichu that you were just talking about. That's obviously a huge gain. And so I think it was kind of the obvious number one deck that was still going to be good, still going to be competitive, and a bunch of people are playing it today. Yeah, I think probably the only thing that really hurt it was losing something like Nest Ball. You lose a lot of your consistent search for Tapu Koko Prism, probably the most important card in your deck other than Thunder Mountain. Yeah, we do lose some of that search, but we also have its own little version of search with Electromagnetic Radar here, of course. Cannot get that Tapu Koko Prism Star, but it can get the two big tag teams in the deck. Yeah, uh, this is not too bad. He did play that Cynthia already, but he has a Volkner for next turn in his hand, and Volkner is one of the supporter cards that really puts this deck over the edge. Uh, just being able to set up your combo, essentially. Like, this is a very fast deck, but you're really just trying to do one thing, and that's full blitz as early as possible. Yeah, fast deck indeed, as we saw Jason Anacario yeah. uh, beat his opponent in, I think, like six total combined turns or something in the match. So definitely goes to show you how powerful and how aggressive this uh, Pikachu and Zekrom deck can be. So. Jeremy, tell me, absent of any other context, absent of the exact deck lists or you know, how the first couple turns have gone for these players, what do you think of the matchup in general? Uh, Who's favorite here? So it's, it's really iffy. Uh, this Dark Toolbox deck really needs to get a few Sneasels in play, the Poifuls, and just I'm going to try to keep energy in play, and then from then I'll eventually overwhelm you. Uh, the thing is, like, I, I just don't know if you might have enough time. Uh, this deck also has in the past been featuring a lot of super scoop ups. And that is one card that actually could save like a couple prizes and steal them away from Kenny. I believe we saw a couple of Sneasel prized as well. Yes. That could end up being a, a really big problem for Zachary there if you're saying that he just needs to set up as many as possible. And it looks like he might have to actually pass his first turn with only one, depending on what the next couple of draws are like. Yeah, and it's actually pretty different. Uh, he, uh, Zachary's actually not opting for super scoop up in his list. He's going with three B strings, uh, just being able to get those energy in play, and then you can move them around once they're in play. Interesting way to go with the deck. We saw B string actually play a big part in the uh, Blacephalon the GX deck that we saw win on camera earlier. Hopefully, maybe B string can do the same thing for Zachary here, as he has to pass back to Kenny. Yeah, uh, this is the one detrimental thing. Those two Sneasel prized, Sneasel in the active spot, wasn't able to move it, and then you have that Ditto, but no other like Poipool or anything there. 
So he's going to really be put in a position where if Kenny takes a knockout, he's going to be so far behind. Yeah, and again, I think this is one of the major issues that a lot of players had with this deck is that you already just, you have to set up so much and you have so many moving parts. And then when you get in a situation like this, which mind you is unfortunate, you have two price measles and you can't move the active one. Um, but when you get in a position like this, it can just be really hard to win the game starting on the second turn. All right, so Volkner nabs Kenny the stadium nav. And this is one of the new cards out of Unified Minds that has really put this deck over the edge. It is essentially a timer ball, but for stadiums. And so you flip two coins, he gets one head, searches deck for a stadium, that equals your Thunder Mountain Prism. Yeah, all you need is one head. We've seen it fail a few times on camera today, but did not fail for Kenny as we got that Thunder Mountain. Very, very powerful uh, Prism Stadium. So now, depending on his hand, I know he has the energy from the Volkner. He will be able to attack with the Zerora if it's active. But if he has an energy switch, he'll be able to full blitz, which is exactly what you want to do. Cherish Ball, another new addition that one of the things I think makes all, all the GX decks good, but especially this one just adds that little boost of consistency. Yeah, this is tough because I believe I see uh, Denonade GX in his hand. Uh, so he could opt to attach to the bench Pikachu and Zekrom Denonade GX to hope to get the energy switch. But if you whiff, you don't take the knockout. That means he's able to evolve this Sneasel, evolve the Ditto into a Naginatal if he wants to. It's high risk, high reward turn here for Kenny. We'll have to see exactly what he puts together. It and looks there like that's we what go. he's going for. Electro power, attachment to the Pikachu and Zekrom GX onto the bench. And now the Dene comes down. Six fresh cards for Kenny Britton. Yeah, opts to discard the Zeraora GX that he got with that Cherish Ball. And ooh. Off the six cards, he gets a tag switch, but unfortunately, since he started that Zeraora GX, it's not able to move the energy off it because it only moves from a tag team to another Pokemon. So he will be able to attack if he wants to tag switch off the Pikachu. We're going to see a reset stamp first, another uh, card that's going to make a huge splash at uh, both this tournament and in the future of the format. All right, so I, one thing he can do, he got that Zapdos. He can tag switch to the Zap. Oh, no, he attacks for free. Even better. Yeah, just, just have the Thunder Mountain there. There's the knockout. Sneasel is down. Kenny takes a prize. And now, again, you know, we, we maybe even thought that Zachary was already kind of on the back foot with just the matchup. But now with, you know, one Sneasel maximum available to him, Kenny's already up a prize. This is going to be a hard road to battle back for Zachary. Yeah, uh, one good thing, though, for Zachary is that Kenny played that reset stamp last turn. And this turn, he's really going to look to Rogue Ring to search his deck and build his turn. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, you know, the reset stamp is the reset stamp on six is not exactly what you're usually yeah. trying to do, but sometimes <laughs> you just have to. All right, does get that Weavile GX thanks to that Cherish Ball, and then plays down a Hapu. I think this is one of the first times we've seen this card on stream today. Yeah, I don't think we've seen it yet. Zachary going to go ahead and compare what he sees on the top of his deck to his hand, make sure he chooses the right cards. Yeah, it's really hit or miss. So it's very reminiscent of the old supporter Sage's training that sure. we've had from Heart Gold, Soul Silver. Look at the top five, pick two, discard three. This one's look at the top six, pick two, discard four. Some might say, well, that's not really that much of a big difference, but it's a lot of resources that you might be losing in a format where it's really hard to recover them. Yeah, the, the resource trade really, I think, is the important part there. The, with a lot of the old Sages training decks, you were OK with discarding cards. Your discard pile just was another resource, which may not be the case here. We see the Thunder Mountain go away. Yeah, Dark City, another new stadium from Unified Minds, giving your basic Dark Pokemon free retreat. Uh, it's very good in this type of deck, allowing you to just switch to different attackers as you please. Saw so Kenny pick up the Dark Stadium Rita, just make sure he knew what was going on. And now we're going to see a pass. Action is back on Kenny. Oh, that's so disappointing. Energy Switch was the top card <laughs> for Kenny here. Uh, it, that always seems to happen. Now we have to see an attachment to that. Zapdos, of course, if it wants to attack, it will have to attack the fairway like our ancestors did using energy cards. <laughs> Yeah, his hand doesn't look too strong, though. I think just the Cynthia has that energy switch. I don't know if he wants to play it just yet, but there we go. He will need one more if he wants to full blitz this turn. There's a Cynthia, like you said, going to reset his hand of six cards. 
And honestly, if for the Pikachu's and Zekrom deck, if you're not really full blitzing for the first three turns, I, I kind of feel like I'll, I'll take that. Like, well, yeah, you, you don't get energy in play. I'll get set up, get mine in play. Right, right. That's kind of the big advantage of the Pikachu and Zekrom deck is that you really want to be attacking early, being aggressive, getting the energy set up. And when you don't do that, your, your deck just doesn't function like it's supposed to. Yeah, the, the Zapdos can only take you so far. And especially staring down a board of all GX Pokemon except for that Poipool, it's not looking good. All right, but looking at that hand, and no, I do not see anything. He has that Denonate GX. He will be able to discard his hand and try to dig for it yet again. He does have that Electro Power, but he would need one more to take the knockout, because I believe Hoopa has 190 HP. Oh, he's going for it. He's going in. Oh, he has it. OK. There's but, the energy switch. But now he has to decide. He can either Electro Power, Denonay, try to go for another one. But he's already wasted one earlier on in the turns. Or he can Tag Bolt, take the knockout. But then you're left without a GX attack. And the Raichu, Alolan Raichu's GX attack is probably your best bet against a deck like this Dark Box. And it looks like he's going to take the more conservative route, not wasting any resources, not using up his GX attack, and just fueling up a bunch of energy onto that Raichu Alolan Raichu GX. And that's probably the best thing. Uh, again, it's so hard to recover resources in this format. Uh, unless you're playing something like Orangaroo Resource Management, you really can't get back a lot of those cards. Yeah, resources aren't just free. Uh, they, it really matters. So I think it's a really good discipline play by Kenny there to just not discard any cards, not worry about you know, doing the maximum he could that turn, and sitting back and just saying, I'm going to need these cards later. I'm OK with waiting yet another turn. Yeah, the one unfortunate thing, though, is Zachary was able to just keep the two cards that he searched for in his hand. And now we'll see what he's going to be able to do with them. It might have been the, at least the Custom Catcher, because he has two of them. In. That he does. Custom Catcher also a big part of this format now. All right, there is the first Naganadel in play, charging up. Three energy in play now. Free Retreat, thanks to the stadium, means he will be able to attack with that Dark Ryan Umbreon GX if he wants to. Considering his options is Zachary. Does It looks like he actually, you know, he we thought he was going to have a little bit bad of a start. He got, uh, Kenny got a quick knockout, rather. But it looks like Kenny has stumbled just enough to where Zachary might be able to pull back into things. Obviously, the game is far from over. Yeah. But. Uh, once you kind of get set up, this, these decks really just like one hit blows, one hit blows, one hit blows. And you just need to get to that point with this dark deck. It looks like he might. Yeah, we just saw, we just saw a again. pass from, Ke from Zachary there. Yeah, so he rogue rings again. All right, so really just setting up his hand. He wants this to get knocked out so he can just slam down a bunch of B-strings and then get everything in play. Yeah, and it feels so good to do that, too, after, we've, uh, after we saw Kenny already use the reset yeah. slam. Who, I don't know how many he's playing, but that's got to feel good to just know that your hand is safe. Yeah, I believe I saw at least two, uh, but it'll be interesting to see if he actually goes for it with this Volkner here. But no, looks like that custom that catcher. Case. This is a pretty good option here, especially because there is no other Sneasel on the bench. So if you try to take out this Weavile GX, all his energy that's spread out is going to stay spread out. Exactly. And we do see those custom catchers come to play. <laughs> it's actually just going to prompt a concession from Zachary there. Yeah. Uh, having those two Sneasel in the prizes means you can't really have many options for you. Another thing we see players at this level of competition do is, you know, the game clearly wasn't over there in that Kenny had not taken all six of his prizes, but Zachary had recognized, okay, my chances of winning this game are so low, I think I need to just give this one up, go on to the next game, and hopefully have enough time to win the next two games to win the match. Yeah, and that's hard because you saw his setup was all right for what he was dealing with, but since he only had that one Weavile, it's your whole basis for your deck. And if that's gone and you don't prepare for that, then there's nothing really you can do. Well, the scary part, too, if, if I'm Zachary here, is that Kenny didn't have a very aggressive start. Obviously, oh, not at all. The, the he did have the Zapdos knockout, though, and that probably sealed the game for him. Right. That just that, that, that early turn, and it's so... I, I just got to believe that if you, know, if, if you need multiple Sneasels and you need your opponent to have a bad start and you need this and you need that, I just got to believe that it's got to be hard to actually pull off a win uh, you know, in two out of three. 
Yeah, uh, but Zachary's somehow done it four times, and he's looking to do it a fifth time here. He's gonna have to make the comeback, though, winning the next two. Yeah, gotta win the next two straight to advance. Again, these players are 4-0 and 1, taking uh, unfortunate draws. So one win will not lock them up for day two, but they'll have two more shots at just one more win, uh, which, you know, that's a 50-50 shot. Hopefully, hopefully whoever wins Let's can get there. Let's flip a coin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think anything changes now with Zachary having the ability to go first and hopefully being able to, you know, set up more Sneasels or anything like that? Yeah, uh, well, it's really deceiving. So you see this Pikachu and Zekrom deck uh, always be really fast. Uh, like Emery, Taylor, just dominating sure, sure. Uh, North American Internationals. You have uh, Jason earlier on stream just dominating. But the thing is, it's really just its own setup combo deck. And if you have a turn to just attach an energy and then set up your hand for next turn to get it, it's even better. And that's what we saw Kenny do. So being able to get the first like evolutions in play before your opponent can actually pull off a good full blitz, it's going to be amazing. Looks like players are shaking hands. Game two is just underway. Kenny Britton and Zachary Kreckler looking to inch ever closer to the second day of competition here at the 2019 World Championship. It, it looks like he started that Mega Sableye Tyranitar GX, I believe. Looks like we're going to see a Cherish Ball to start things off for Zachary. Again, he does get to go first here, make the first actions, hopefully play some Sneasels to evolve over the next few turns. Yeah, and you see that Tapu Coco Prism on Kenny's bench. That is a great sign if you're a Pikachu and Zekrom player. Being able to just, yeah, I have it. I don't need to search for it. I don't need to waste a Pokemon communication off of my electromagnetic radar to put back a card that I'll need just so I can get this guy in play. We didn't even see it last game, but it's probably just an all-star. No, oh, it's hugely important. I mean, it's one of the things that makes the deck work and can really swing the games by so much. Poke gear for Zachary here. A few different options, but opts to take none of them. Probably has that Lily in his hand already. And there's that Mega Sableye and Tyranitar GX. Uh, that Greedy Crush is really what it's in there for. 210 damage for five energy. Take an extra prize card if it was a GX or an EX. Right, Jeremy, he does have that Lily. Perfect support oh, card no. to play on the first turn, but... Not perfect you don't have, anything you don't else? have any basics. That's the pass, wow. And this is the problem people have been having with this Dark Toolbox deck. It is just not consistent enough to find the basic Pokemon. Your only really guaranteed basic search in this format is something like Pokemon Fan Club. And when you're playing that card in your deck, it's, it's not really going to be a fun time. Right. Gone are the days of things like Nest Ball, of course, due to the rotation. And it may end up punishing Zachary here pretty hard. And I actually like this Cynthia here. You need a little bit more cards. Uh, if you can get an electromagnetic radar off the top, It'll be pretty amazing because then you turn on the free retreat from that Dawn Wings Necrozma with, thanks to the Zerora GX. Uh, and then maybe you can even find yourself something like a Zapdos. Yes, yeah, so talk, talk to me a little bit about that Dawn Wings Necrozma. I think if you, you're just tuning into the stream, you're not, you don't really follow the game on a deep level and you see this Dawn Wings Necrozma in the, in in the a, big in deck lightning. With all lightning yeah, energy. the big lightning uh, GX deck. What, what, what is this doing for the deck? Well, so Zerora GX has an ability called Thunderclap Zone. Probably the best ability name in the game. Uh, gives all your Pokemon free retreat that have a lightning energy attached to it. So with Dawnwing's Necrozma GX, you're able to invasion, bring it active, and then if it has lightning, you have free retreat, so you just retreat to the Pokemon you want. Well, it goes really well with this deck because you have cards like Zapdos and Raichu Alolan Raichu GX that do more damage if they're brought into the active this turn. Right, so that's just a free way to accomplish that. Uh, whereas usually you'd have to retreat the old-fashioned way. Looks like Kenny's actually just passing the turn as well. Yeah, uh, again, it, he did what he wants to do. He might have a few more resources next turn, but all he really needs to get going is probably something like a Volkner. All right, just, ma just making energy attachments and passing the turn is Kenny's plan. All right, this Cynthia is big from Zachary here. He's going to need to find at least Sneasel. There's a ditto, but oh, no. Nothing too much else. He's going to probably have to Dene change this hand away to at least find another Sneasel and maybe a Voipool as well. But no, opts to keep him. Opts to pass the turn action back on Kenny now. 
uh, Zachary, not concerned with getting too many Sneasels into play, at least not at the cost of all the resources in his hand. Oh, that is a good looking hand. <laughs> You have that Volkner, you have Stadium Nav as well as an Electro Power Zapdos. So you have plenty of options here, and it's almost, oh, well, I don't know. He does not have the way to get the Zerora without not getting the energy switch. Right, so this, this Volkner will be interesting to see what Kenny can put together here. He has a lot of options, um, but it sounds oh, he, has like he doesn't have... Sorry? He has the energy switch, so he can get electromagnetic radar or something like Cherish Ball, get that Zero Aura out, and then he'll be able to full blitz this turn if he gets heads on that Stadium Nav. Yeah, getting heads on Stadium Nav is definitely not a guarantee. I've seen some players miss that entirely um, on camera this weekend. Looking through his options, Faulkner is just one of those cards that really, like, completes this deck. Uh, you have a lot of one of like kind of items that you're like, oh, this will be good. And you're like, okay, well, I'm going to reset stamp you this turn, or I'm going to get this tag switch so I can pull off a big tag bolt this turn. Right, an easy way to think about it is you may look at this list and say, well, you know, Kenny, Kenny plays one or two reset stamp, but when, when you have Volkner in the mix, you actually play four to six, right? Volkner is another out to finding a reset stamp and searching for those very uh, powerful but maybe situational cards uh, with things like Volkner is really, really important and really brings the deck together. Yeah, so we actually see Kenny discard the Stadium Nav and the second Volkner from his hand with that electromagnetic radar. That's telling me, yeah, it was a prize. You probably saw it earlier. And now he's going to have to go a different route. He can try to go for that Zapdos, put a little bit of chip damage, and I think that's probably the best option because then you could just come in with a Pikachu and Zekrom later and take a knockout with full blitz. Looks like that's what's going to happen here. We see the Electro Power. Zapdos gets moved into the active position. Energy switch onto the Pikachu and Zekrom GX, and a dead A change. All right, so fresh six cards here, and Kenny is rolling right now on his turn. Must be feeling pretty nice against his opponent that uh, has really nothing going. Yeah, just the difference in the boards of Kenny and Zachary here. Uh, you know, Kenny not exactly attacking with the Pikachu and Zekrom or, you know, going off in a huge way, but chipping in with this Zapdos here, having a bunch of Pokemon in play, spreading in some energy around. A decent few opening turns from Kenny Britton here. Yeah, it would have been uh, pretty pretty just demoralizing for Zachary if Kenny got that double custom catcher off that dead A <laughs> change. But there we go, 110 damage on the active. And Zachary now has an option. He will be able to get Weavile GX and play this turn if he wants. He has it in his hand. It's the reason he didn't dead A change last turn. And now it's just going to be, he's going to need a lot of help off the top of his deck. Uh, probably a Dark City, and then he's going to need an energy and then at least a Pokemon he can attack with. Well, he has the energy there. Yeah, a lot of help Zachary will need indeed. Oh. I feel like this is a situation that a lot of these Dark Toolbox players get into, which is, I'm going to need some help, but man, if I get it, it's over. And then there is the Greninja and Zorark GX tag team. Uh, one of the cards that people kind of play in the deck, they kind of don't. Uh, you just get mixed opinions on it, like, well, I really love the card, or, ah, no, the card's trash. Uh, but it attacks for two energy, and it has a damage output that isn't really capped. Like, you can just get right. a bunch of energy in play and knock out pretty much anything. Right, earlier we talked about that being one of the uh, potential, uh, you know, positives of the Blacephalon GX deck is the ability to just do a bunch of damage, go over the top of people, and this, uh, Zorak and Greninja tag team kind of does the same thing. Yeah, and he had the Dark City, so he will have free retreat. Now it's just deciding on what he wants to attack with this turn. He could Rogue Ring with Hoopa, set up for next turn, or actually get some damage going here. I don't believe it's a knockout. Uh, it might be. That big tag team moved into the active position. Energy move to it. Looks like player is going to take a bit to read the card and count the damage. All right, is so it's knock out. 30 plus, I believe, then. Uh, so it does 120 total. So Zap goes down. Zachary striking first this game. 
not too bad, but he's going to be staring down this Pikachu and Zekrom that's going to look to attack next turn. Yeah, not usually what you see from uh, the Pikachu and Zekrom GX decks, but uh, both times Kenny has had a little bit slower of a start than usual. Let's see what he can put together here. Well, he does have that Tapu Koko Prism on the bench. Uh, he does have an energy switch as well, so he'll be able to attack this turn. You never really want to use Dance of the Ancients for just one energy, but sometimes you have to, and if you do it, you're going to at least get a full blitz out of it. Yeah, there's, there's the attachment from the discard pile. There's the energy switch under the active Pikachu and Zekrom. Attachment from the hand. Lysander Lab, a card that isn't really relevant, uh, relevant in this matchup specifically, but it's more so that you can just bump that Dark City from play. Yeah, I mean, we're in a position right now in the, in the format where there's lots of really important stadiums, and you almost need to play your own stadiums just to be able to knock out other people's stadiums, which is, I think, actually really cool. Uh, I, I love it when formats are like that, where stadiums actually matter. Oh, and this is awkward for Kenny here, having the Dede change his hand away, discarding two Lightning and a Custom Catcher, especially after using that Tapu Koko Prism, those Lightning are in there for good. Yeah, those are gone again. A lot of the game right now is focused on resources and how you can manage them. Kenny had to do what he had to do, but it cannot feel good to discard those Lightning Energy. Yeah, drawing into a hand that isn't really that going well for him. He does have a double reset stamp, so reset stamp. Zachary back down to five, and then Let's hope this is good enough. Unfortunately, he does not have another attack team on the bench. Uh, usually try to full blitz to something like that Raichu Alolan Raichu. Right, and then they can really benefit from all that energy, oh. like a Pikachu and yeah. Zekrom GX. Gets that Pikachu and Zekrom down, and that's exactly what you want to see here, just because you don't want to put all your eggs in one basket on your active. Do you think you would rather have the Raichu and Alolan Raichu or the Pikachu and Zekrom in this spot? I, I love Raichu Alolan Raichu. That card's insane, um, especially if your opponent's not really playing out to the paralysis. And then the fact that for five energy only and an Electro Power, you can knock out anything in Zachary's deck. Yeah, quite the powerful addition to this deck. I'm also a pretty big fan of that card. Although with the way the damage is spread about Zachary's board, Tag Bolt does look pretty appetizing here. You can't complain about a tag bolt that's going to take a bunch of prizes and knock a bunch of energy. Yeah, I'll, I'll take six prizes in one turn. Yeah. Fine. I accept. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Zachary going deep in the tank here. Has six cards in hand. Pokemon communication. Has something like Denine he can find if he does, ha does not have any draw. But looks like he's eyeing down that Weavile GX to evolve that second Sneasel. And again, one thing he's missing from this board is those Naganadels in play. And again, he plays three B string to combo with them, so it could be a little awkward. Yeah, no acceleration on either side of things here for Zachary. Um, kind of an awkward setup that he has now, just attaching one energy per turn, a bunch of damage on his board. Looks like he's just going to go ahead and retreat. Yeah, and this is not good. You're giving up two energy from play to retreat so you could set up for next turn. But a simple tag switch, tag bolt, maybe some custom catchers come into play. It's going to be rough next few turns. Yeah, definitely not how Zachary envisioned this game going over the early turns, I don't think. But he's got to do what he's got to do to try and stay in this. Set up for next turn. Does cost him some energy, but yeah. he's going to win this game. He needs to actually... Uh, you know, set up for next turn and really make a difference. Yeah, thankfully for Kenny, he does have the second reset stamp that he got off that dead A change last turn. So he will be able to kind of just like, eh, you like those cards? Eh, take them away. Must be nice. And there we go. Oh, how heartbreaking. It's got to be so demoralizing. It's like, it's like when you used to um, Drampa, GX attack, shuffle, draw 10, <laughs> and you just get end immediately yeah. every time. Uh, it's pretty much how it goes. Uh, in testing, a lot it happened with uh, that Winsicott because it's Toy Box GX, search for five cards. Same thing. Double Electro Power coming down, and that will be enough to take the knockout with Full Blitz here from the active. Now charging up his bench, most likely, and we'll probably see a Tag Bolt to finish off the game next turn. 
Again, this just shows the raw power of the Pikachu and Zekrom deck, just taking knockouts after knockouts. They have things that search for their Pokemon. They have things that boost their damage. They can accelerate energy. They can just basically do everything that all these other decks are trying to do, but so much easier. Hun, look at that. There's two yeah, Beast Rings, three Dark Energies in his hand, and Zachary has nothing else. He will lose two pretty quick games here to Kenny, and Kenny is now one win away from making day two here at the World Championships. Yeah, congratulations to Kenny. Those didn't even look close. Uh, that's how I felt with so many different uh, matchups with the Pikachu and Zekrom deck, is I just feel like you're just doing everything so efficiently. You're attacking quickly. You're accelerating energy. I just think this deck is, I think this deck is great. Obviously, everyone